Every year, three million of us head to the Greek islands for our holidays. And it's easy to see why. This is Greece, and look at that. I have a strong affinity with the islands. My mum is Greek. But I've only holidayed here. Here we go. Until now. <laughs> so I'm going to explore their hidden side. Look, there's nobody here. Hello, everybody. Oh, you're good. From their breathtaking natural wonders. Let me show you our real mother. To the colourful customs and the architectural splendour. That is a miracle of loveliness. It makes me proud to be just that little bit Greek. This is a voyage of discovery and I'm taking you with me. I haven't been to Santorini since I was 17, and since then it's changed unimaginably. It's become one of the most popular destinations in Europe, and one of the most famous in the world, and this is why. The impossibly scenic, gorgeous views. Every year, nearly two million people are lured to Santorini, not least for its spellbinding sunsets. But my tip, it's well worth setting the alarm early, at least once, so you can experience the total tranquility of a sunrise like this one. And then you have it all to yourself. Located southeast of mainland Greece, in the Aegean Sea, Santorini is the undisputed jewel in the crown of the Cyclades. Striking blue domed churches and whitewashed villages populate this 76 square kilometer island. But Santorini owes its seductive looks to one of the most catastrophic geological events in recorded history. About three and a half thousand years ago, that volcano erupted and the centre of the island collapsed. And then the interior filled with the sea and created this, the caldera. Believed by some to have inspired the legend of the lost city of Atlantis, one thing is certain. It left behind one of the most spectacular landscapes in all of Greece. Only 60 years ago, Santorini lacked even the most basic amenities. But now, with more than 50 five-star hotels and resorts, it's become a playground for the rich and famous. I'd better scrub up a bit. I'm meeting the woman who kick-started the transformation, opening Santorini's first luxury hotel in the 90s. Today, Kalia's still catering to its most discerning visitors here at her newest hideaway. And yes, she does look a bit like a Greek Sandra Bullock. You know this island very well. Yeah. So Santorini has gone from mm -hmm. micro, from yes. this. It's exploded, hasn't it, over the decades? Back in the 90s, Santorini was um, a very simple, like, um, uh, not well-known island. It was more a place for bed and breakfast, for camping. If you would then say Santorini is a luxury destination, everybody would think, are you crazy? Who would go there for luxury? Local people never expected from no electricity in the 70s to this kind of, you know, amazing, wow destination that Santorini became today. Once the rustic retreat of an eccentric widow with connections to the Greek royal family and a passion for horses, these days her stables are luxurious suites and the hotel has one of the most Instagrammable pools I've ever seen. Santorini has become so popular because of its natural beauty. The Santorini selfie. Exactly, the Santorini selfie. And do you think there is still a hidden, unexplored Santorini? Oh my God, people? absolutely. If you stay here for a week, I will take you to places that you never thought they exist. Almost the two thirds of Santorini are unexplored. All in good time, but there's no way I'm passing up the opportunity to take a dip in that pool. With as many as 18,000 tourists descending on the island some days, it's hard to imagine finding peace and quiet away from the crowds jostling for the best view. But it's the hidden Santorini I'm after, 
so I'm back in my hiking boots and on its trail. I don't think when you mention the island of Santorini to people that the first thing that pops into their head is walking and hiking. Well, neither was I thinking about walking in Santorini before I actually moved here. My guide is fellow walking fan Nico, who first fell in love with the island 20 years ago and probably knows how to get off the beaten track here better than anyone. Uh, during the first season, I actually got overwhelmed with uh, tourism <laughs> and I started walking the paths, realizing that nobody is walking on them anymore. So it was very satisfying to discover that there's about 65 to 70 kilometers of paths all over the island. Nice. Around landscape like this, where it's so quiet. It is nice to be able to escape like this. Yes. And to share all of this beauty Absolutely. with people. Today we're following an ancient track linking villages, which still bear the sign of a time when the island was ruled by Italy. Let's have a little look behind us. Ah. Oh. Hmm. So what's that village called? This is Eborio. Eborio. Meaning commerce, one of the biggest villages of the island. Built around one of the five castles the Venetians built in the 12th and 1300s. So you don't think of castles when you think of Santorini. Mm. You've got five of them. Five of them. This is Quite actually... greedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not us, it's the Venetians. Yeah, okay, well, there, there we go. Up here it's easy to see Santorini's spectacular coastline isn't the only legacy of that explosive chapter in its history. The rich volcanic soil makes this a forager's paradise. Fig trees. Just, you know, the random fig tree on your mm -hmm. walking path. Capers growing wild everywhere. Capers. One of the hardest you, plants to cultivate, You by don't the way. get this in the Lake District or in the Yorkshire Dales or in the Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Winding through a landscape of vineyards, every bend of the path reveals more of the island's unexpected edible delights. What's this? Well, it's a weed, essentially, so you can cut some if you'd like and just rub it. What is it? That's uh, wild fennel, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Oh, that is a really zingy aniseed smell. Mm. It goes right at the nostrils, especially when your nostrils are as big as mine. Mm. Lovely. It hasn't escaped my attention that we're heading ever upwards on our hike. In fact, our destination is the highest point in Santorini and the former capital, Pirgo. A labyrinth of traditional houses built around one of those fortresses left behind by the Venetians. The alleyways were designed to be deliberately misleading and confusing though, weren't they? Yes, to confuse the pirates who were trying to find the only entrance of the castle. It certainly worked. It confuses me. Nico is promising me we'll be rewarded for our efforts. We're in search of a secret sunset spot. This is it. There is no way I'd be able to track this down without him. Is that not our viewing platform there for the sunset? No, not quite yet. It's pretty lovely. We've got something more special for you, though. And to your right. Let's turn left here. Okay. In here. Oh, good lord. In through the door? Up the steps. Oh, the steps. <laughs> it's a proper magical mystery tour, this. Oh. Now, this is a special spot. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Haramu, my pleasure. That is a miracle of loveliness. Now, where would most people go for the sunsets in Santorini? I would think, yeah, the northwestern most tip, the most famous spot for watching the sunset. But not as special as this spot. Mm -hmm. See, I bring you to all the best places. Well, Nico does. <laughs> in the memory bank. The blue dome, the two crosses, the sun setting over the sea. I'll remember this. I'm on Santorini, known today as the supermodel of the Greek islands. More Giselle than Kate Moss, I'd say. But for years, Santorini was considered one of the Aegean's poorest places to live. 
This island has very little rainfall, but because of its fertile volcanic soil, everything that grows here is rich in flavour, including an old peasant dish that's still a Santorini speciality and one of my faves. I'm heading to a local cafe in the village of Pirgo to try the fava beans. Calimera, Adonis. Calimera, Calimera, Diganis. Ah, Calá, Diganis. Lovely to see Hello. you. Antonis owns Café Brusco, where his fava beans are prepared in the same way that they would have been generations ago. So this is the old school way, traditional way. Yes. We put the fava here. We put the fava here. Basically, the stone grinder uh -huh. okay. is taking off the shells and you're left with the favas. Wherever you go in Greece, you'll be served fava beans. But the Santorini favas are unique to this island and they've been granted special status. They're dried for a year before they're ready for grinding. Very good. Will you hire me? Do I have a job? Yes? Once the bean has been ground out of the husk, they need to be separated. Oh, very good. As you swirl them, you can see the casings rising to the top. And then kind of... And then... Yes. Very good. And there they are. So this is for the chickens. Yes. And these are for us. Yeah. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Poli Oreo. Poli Oreo. Poli 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 Oreo. Poli Poli Oreo. <laughs> In our family, we are a little bit partial to the old fava bean paste. It's uh, similar to hummus in texture, but the taste is sweeter. It's just delicious. Far from its peasant roots, the Santorini fava is now an expensive gourmet product, harvested by farmers on the island. The locals here like to enjoy it as a dip, gently cooked into a smooth paste. It's the moment of truth. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, I've got it. Poli, Adonis. Poli, uh, from Santorini, sweet wine. Oh, I've got it. Poli. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank you, master. I have a feeling that this is going to be the best fava bean paste I've ever tasted. Mmm. Such a delicate flavour. They mix the fava beans for a long, long time. They heat them, they add olive oil, they add onion, they keep mixing, they keep mixing, they scoop off the top of the surface. Oh, and they end up with this. This is Santorini in a little dish. It's just a demonstration of the deliciousness of the fruits and vegetables on this very, very fertile volcanic island. Not even 11, I'm drinking wine. Whoop, whoop, winning. I've had a taste of the old Santorini, but these days, it's hard to escape the signs of the island's recent reinvention, catering to the massive influx of tourists. Sadly, one of the biggest downsides is what they leave behind. While laws are being introduced to ban single-use plastic, a huge amount still ends up in the sea every day. But I'm meeting someone who's doing something about it. Yasu? Hello, hello. I'm Hi. Julia. Nice to meet you, Julia. Nice to meet you. Hi, Xanthi. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you. Lefteris. Lefteris. How are yeah. you, Lefteris? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Xanthi, the same name as one of my daughters, is the skipper of this boat, and she's taking us along the south coast of Santorini, past the famous White Beach. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? It's like a huge iceberg. Born into a family of five generations of fishermen, Lefteris is determined to bring Santorini's waters back to their former glory. What's the project? What's it called? The name of the project is Enalia, which in Greek means together with the fishermen. I saw that together with the nets, the fishermen were collecting a lot of plastic. And I saw a can of Coca-Cola. It had a weird color, so I saw the expir expiration day, and it expired like in 1987. 
and you realize that how long all the rubbish yes. stays down there. Then the biggest shock was when the fisherman took it from my hand and threw it back in the sea. And he, showed, he, he told me that that's the problem we have. And then he threw it back? Yes. So how are you and this project going to get over that? So we give them now uh, beams, so as to put the plastic there, and then they bring it up in uh, seven ports currently in Greece, where we store it, and then we recycle and upcycle. And these are made from plastic that's been collected by the fishermen, right? Exactly. Specifically, this one is made from nets. They are turned into socks. So you're upcycling and you're recycling? Yes. And we are just getting started. So hopefully we are able to clean maybe four or five tons of marine plastic per week. And now our fishermen, they are so proud. They are really, really inspired and they are talking to other fishermen because they see that in the areas that we do the project, uh, the sea is becoming clean and the fish are more again. This is a subject that I'm really passionate about. This story and the people behind this story are genuinely inspiring. This is one of the problems that we're all living with. And these guys want to do something about it. I've been told if I want to see what life on Santorini was like before tourism took hold, all I need to do is take a short boat ride. Thank you. This is Theresia, baby Santorini. And you can see Mama Santorini over there about 10 minutes away. And this is how it used to be about 60 years ago. What a contrast. It may share the same dramatic landscape as its glitzy neighbor, but Thiracia really is like stepping back in time. This is the Greece always described to me by my mum. Just three and a half miles square, much of its sparse mountainous landscape is uninhabited. Calling this place sleepy is an understatement. There are signs that tourism is starting to spread across the water from Santorini. But the visitors who come here rarely venture beyond the harbour. Maybe it's the steep climb that puts people off exploring. But fortunately, I've bagged the island's only taxi to take me to the top. I think this is my ride. And I'm definitely travelling in style. <laughs> it's the Popemobile! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Thank you. Lovely carpet. Oreo. Okay. Yeah. No taxi. Can I stop? It's a far cry from the black cabs. Your kitchen cupboard door's a bit rickety, a bit wobbly. It's definitely unspoiled, this island, isn't it? Could be more different to Santorini. It's quite bad, really, to go from all that glamour and pulsating tourism to this sleepy little island. An island that didn't even have electricity until 1980. I'm going to get out here, wherever here is. Okay. Let's get it oh, There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I've come to the capital, Manolas, but it's little more than a village. Strolling through its almost deserted lanes feels a world away from anything. The hub is the Church of St. Constantine, built over 100 years ago. And that's where I'm meeting Papa Lucas, the village priest of nearly 30 years. Yes, yeah, Papa Lucas. Yes, yes. The Canis? Kala, Kala, yes. What a beautiful church. Ευχαριστοπολί. Behind us, this is very beautiful. I haven't seen... This is grandfather. Your grandfather made this? Yes. Αποξύλα, τα οποία βρέθηκαν στη θάλασσα, τα χρόνια εκείνα, πιθανότατα από κάποιο ναυάγιο. Shipwrecks. That's why it's so unique. 
How many people live on the island? Σε όλο το νησί περίπου ζουν 250 κάτοικοι. And what do you think of Santorini, which is so big? Σαντορίνη πιστεύω ότι έχουν γίνει λάθη, τα λάθη φαίνονται σήμερα. Δεν ζητάμε πολλούς τουρίστες, ζητάμε ποιοτικό τουρισμό. Να αναπτυχθεί το νησί τουριστικά αλλά και ποιοτικά. Να μην κάνουμε το λάθος που έχει κάνει η Σαντορίνη. What is so special about uh, Teresia, the island? What is so, so ωραίο about Teresia? Θεωρείται το ωραιότερο ηλιοβασίλεμα της Σαντορίνης στη Νία. Ε, το ωραιότερο ηλιοβασίλεμα στη Σαντορίνη είναι στη Θηρασία, διότι δεν παρεβάλλεται τίποτε μπροστά στο ηλιοβασίλεμα αυτό, σε αντίθεση με την Νία που παρεβάλλεται η Θηρασία. Από την Θηρασιά δεν παρεβάλλεται τίποτα. Είναι όλος ο ορίζοντας ανοιχτός. So they're all wrong. This is the place to come for the best sunsets, not Santorini. We're all wrong. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Ευχαριστώ κι εγώ. Thirasia is the most untouched island I've been to so far. It's like stepping back in time. And even though it's so close to the glamorous energy of Santorini, it's a different world. I wonder how long it'll stay like this. Returning to Santorini after so many years really has been full of contrast. From 21st century luxuries to rustic, undiscovered charm. I certainly won't be leaving it so long before I come back again. Next time, my Greek odyssey takes me to the Sparades, the Paradise Islands. Look, there's nobody here. Visiting Skiathos and Skopelos, I'll be discovering colorful local traditions. I feel very Greek and very hot. And taking in the blockbusting scenery of the Mamma Mia Island. That is just amazing. This is Greece, and look at that. 